This is another installation in my series of talks on systematic interpretation of bone and joint MRI, and I'd like to go through ankle MRI today. Um, I'm going to start by showing a few introductory anatomy slides because the anatomy of the ankle is probably less familiar to us than things like knee and shoulder. So let's just take a quick look through some of the, the basic bony and um, soft tissue anatomy. The, uh, the radiographs we're all used to looking at are fairly straightforward in terms of the bones. We have tibia and fibula, talus, and on the lateral view, tibia, the fibula overlapping here talus, calcaneus, and then we have the navicular and the cuboid here. So we don't see much of the soft tissues, obviously, on radiography. You can see some soft tissue opacities due to things like the Achilles tendon, muscles back in here, and so on. But when you look at this, you think, yeah, that's pretty straightforward. And then we get to the MRI anatomy, and it seems like it's a bewildering amount of information. And the part of the goal of this is to try to help you understand how to dig through that bewildering amount of anatomy. A few uh, anatomic slides here, if you will, a car kind of cartoons or 3D renderings. Um, I want to focus a little bit on ligaments on the scan review. And just this slide just is a lateral view of the ankle from this Primal Pictures site here, which is quite good. And um, Keep in mind that you have the syndesmotic ligament complex that binds the tibia and the fibula together. And that has an interosseous membrane component. It also has an anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament and a posterior inferior tibiofibular ligament. So those are not really true ankle ligaments, but those are the syndesmotic ligaments. The true ankle ligaments are lower down and those go between fibula and, and the foot bones here Probably the most important one is what we call the ATF, anterior talofibular ligament. And remember in anatomy that ligaments are named according to their attachment sites. So they go from fibula to talus, so that could be called fibulotalar ligament, but it's typically called the talofibular ligament. That's the most commonly torn ankle ligament if you step off the curb. Okay, so that's a good one to know about when you're looking at MRI scans. A smaller ligament called the calcaneofibular ligament here comes from the fibula down to the calcaneus, and that one's a little tricky to see. We'll look carefully for that on the scans. Then there's a posterior talofibular ligament. So laterally, there are three main ligaments, ATF, calcaneofibular, and posterior talofibular ligament. Medially, just think of the deltoid ligament complex. It has some deep fibers that go between the tibia and the talus and, and more superficial fibers that go between the tibia and the calcaneus, and some of them blend into some other soft tissue structures along the medial ankle. So deltoid, medially, and then the other ligaments laterally. This also is a nice picture showing the posterior tibiofibular ligament, okay? And here's the posterior talofibular ligament here. A lot of this anatomy you can see really well on MRI, and of course we'll go over that in a minute. Tendons, there's a bunch of tendons around the ankle. Uh, the biggest one we know about is the Achilles tendon, posteriorly, um, laterally, the perineal tendons, longus and the brevis here, going all the way from the calf down to their insertions on the foot. Medially, you have uh, tibialis posterior, flexor digitorum longus, and the flexor hallucis longus. So Tom, Dick, and Harry, remember that from anatomy. And then there's anterior tendons as well that I'm not showing here, but we'll look at on the MRI. All this detailed uh, imaging anatomy is labeled on the uh, xrayhead.com uh, site that Bao Do put together. And this is just one screen scrape from that. And you can scroll through sagittal, coronal, and axial images. So on my slides, I don't obviously have the images, the anatomy labeled, but this is a good Thing as reference you could have up side by side with the video or just to review it that way if you'd like. So let's go to um, <clears throat> the kind of interactive anatomy here and so this is a fairly normal ankle and I've put up a sagittal, axial, and coronal image. This, this is T1, this is also T1, and this is a proton density weighted image. Um, and one uh, point about scan planes is that, like any joint, we want to try to be faithful to the, uh, the anatomy. And so if you look at the, the axial image here, you have the, the tibia, 
and the fibula here. So this is a right ankle. And we want the uh, opposite, the orthogonal scan planes, to be faithful to that anatomy. So if we look at the talar dome here, typically we want the sagittal images to be parallel to the talar dome. So if you, this green reference line shows the orientation of the sagittals. And similarly, the coronals will be uh, opposite to that, but but perpendicular to the like uh, talofibular articulation and ankle. Sometimes it's not uncommon for technologists to put the patient in with the ankle a little bit rotated, and then they do the coronals and sagittals kind of to the world um, instead of the patient, and it can make the planes uh, less typical. So. Um, in terms of search patterns, one thing I can go back just to, let me go back to my keynote slides just for a second here, because there's a lot of, uh, a lot of things you can look at on an ankle MRI. And whereas with knee and shoulder, I kind of have specific things I look at on, on specific planes, the same thing is generally true with the ankle, but we kind of bounce back and forth um, with ankle anatomy and use all three planes for the, for the diagnosis. But just in general, things to think about, look at the contours of the bones, things like obvious fractures, osteophytes, look at bone marrow signal intensity, look for effusions in the joints. The main ones we're looking at here are the ankle and subtalar joints. The most important cartilage is along the talar dome and in the, in the, the subtalar joints for the ankle. Ligaments are a big deal, um, looking for ligament sprains and things. And even though most patients that sprain an ankle ligament don't necessarily need an MRI for that sprain because they're typically treated conservatively. Uh, we need to look at the ligaments, whether it's the syndesmotic ligaments or the, the lateral ankle ligaments or the deltoid, to see what's injured, but also to see uh, collateral damage, like damage to the talar dome or other associated injuries with ligament sprains. Tendon pathology is very common. Um, then we also want to look for other structures like the neurovascular bundle and the tarsal tunnel. Look at this uh, area called the sinus tarsi and plantar fascia. And for ankle, there's so many different things that can cause pain and dysfunction that kind of have to comprehensively look through all of these things uh, on every scan. <clears throat> so if we start here, we'll just kind of go systematically through um, the bones. And what I'm going to do uh, in a moment, I'm going to close the sagittal, but just for reference, hopefully this looks all pretty straightforward to you in terms of the anatomy. Um, let me just brighten this up just a little bit. Is that pretty good? So a sagittal view of the ankle. It's a T1 weighted image, so it's very good for the anatomy. Tibia, talus, calcaneus here, and then I know when you're learning, it's hard to remember what's the navicular and what's the cuboid, but I always remember that there's a talonavicular articulation, so talus navicular. And then when you go to the cuboid here, cal the calcaneus, calcaneocuboid joint. So, so that's cuboid there. It's kind of cube-shaped, right? So that could be helpful as well. A um, lot of good anatomy on here as well. You, know, you can see the Achilles tendon. You can see the plantar fascia here, and that's a good plane to look for for that. Um, but let's go back now, and I'm going to close the sagittal so I have a little bit more real estate and um, use the axials quite a bit and the coronals as a reference here. <clears throat> so, so the green line obviously shows the level of the, the axial scan with reference to the coronal. So you can see that here we're above the actual ankle joint, tibia, fibula. So here's tibia and fibula. So let's just take a quick look at the, uh, the syndesmotic ligaments here, right? So, so I kind of tend to go from an inside to outside approach when I do these things, like start with bones, go to the joints, go to the ligaments, go to the tendons, and then more superficially. The actual interosseous membrane that goes between the tibia and the fibula is a pretty thin structure, so it's not always that visible. Here you can see the fibula and see these thin strands of tissue here. That's part of the interosseous membrane there, but don't be surprised if you don't see like a, a discrete band of tissue. So here's tibia, fibula, and you can see some little soft tissue structures within there, but it's not really obvious that it's a thick band. To find the tibiofibular ligaments, you actually have to go lower down. So right at about the level of the ankle joint itself, and probably the most important 
component of that complex is the anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament. And you can see on this scan, actually, these little black lines, like right there, see these little black stripes right there, there, and there? There's actually three of them that we can see. It's all part of the same ligament, but it's like bundles, okay? And it varies quite a bit what that looks like. And you can see that as I scroll up and down here, hopefully you can see that, that you can see pieces of them at any given time, but you don't see the whole thing in continuity, and that's because it's very, very oblique in, in, you know, in terms of the axial scan plate. So it's, so it's going from, if I go anteriorly here on the, <clears throat> on the, on the tibia, so see where we are. If I can get this to cross-reference. So in the coronal image, I'm very anterior on the uh, ankle here. So those ligaments are actually going from tibia very steeply down to the fibula here. So in order to actually find that, you kind of need to start on the tibia here and then go down on the image to con follow it in continuity towards the fibula. Okay, and that's something that's you know part of MSK is being able to scroll through all this anatomy and track things. Um, just a general principle. So this is one that can be tricky to see. So anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament. And then posteriorly, it tends to be a little bit thicker. Again, you have to be at about the level of the, the Taylor dome here. I'm gonna go all the way posteriorly here. So we just barely see the fibula here. Here's the tibia. See this tissue back in there? That's the posterior inferior tibiofibular ligament. So coming off the fibula here and sweeping over towards the tibia, and you don't always catch it exactly in plain, but like this is part of it here. And right at the very posterior inferior margin of the tibia. The pitfall is that if you go too low, you get into this ligament, which we'll look at in a second. That's the posterior talofibular ligament. And it's very easy to confuse tibiofibular or talofibular, but just remember tibiofibular ligaments, part of the syndesmotic complex, and then talofibular are actual ankle ligaments. <clears throat> So that's important for so-called high ankle sprains. And we'll look at some, some actual cases in a, in a few minutes here. Um, so if we go lower down, now we're going to look at the actual true lateral ankle ligaments. And so let me just get this sort of centered up again. So now we're below the level of the Taylor dome. And typically what happens is when we do a straight axial scan plane, it tends to give you an image where the talus is kind of laid out like this, where you see the like the talar body, talar neck, and talar head. See a little bit of the navicular here. And it's kind of looking for that morphology of the talus that you know in the typical scan plane. That's about where I should be seeing this anterior talofibular ligament. So here's fibula, talus, and this, this black band, which is actually a little bit thick in this example because of a prior sprain, like a little bit of scarring, that's the ATF, that's the anterior talofibular ligament. And you should be able to follow it in continuity from fibula all the way to the talus. And then when, when I show the fluid sensitive sequences in a minute, you'll see, you know, when you make a diagnosis, you're looking for interruptions of it, waviness, thinning, thickening, fluid around it, and all those different signs. So, so that's probably the most important ligament to look at in the ankle, ATF, anterior talofibular ligament. Um, when you get to be you know, experienced and a little bit advanced, you wanna be able to find these things in as many planes as possible. So one of the important things is to be able to find this ATF also in the coronal plane. And so if you look here, here's the fibula. And if we scroll from kind of mid fibula anteriorly, like here, you can see this structure here, it's a little bit fuzzy, but that's the anterior talofibular ligament, kind of a cord-like structure going to the talus here coming back to the fibula here. And a lot of times in the axial plane, it's a little bit tricky to see, or you think, oh, it's, it's thinned or it's absent, but you can actually find part of it in the coronal plane. So that helps you troubleshoot and refine your, your diagnosis. So anterior talofibular ligament. Let's just go to the posterior talofibular because that's like right in plane here. So you have conveniently kind of an anterior and a posterior ligament as anatomists tend to name things, right? Um, Here's the fibula. There's a little fossa in the fibula called the malleolar fossa. And the posterior talofibular comes off of that fossa and cruises back towards the posterior aspect of the talus here. Now it may insert on this kind of the lateral tubercle of the talus. Sometimes it actually inserts on a separate bony structure like an os trigonum back in here. And the, the, the PTF, as we call it, 
can have more intermediate signal in it. It's more of a fan-shaped structure. Sorry, I keep going. Um, and can have brighter signal, and that can be normal. So the good news about the PTF is it's almost never torn. So it turns out that when you tear ankle ligaments, they tend to tear from an anterior to posterior direction. So you tend to tear ATF and then the calcaneofibular, which we'll look at in a second, and then the posterior talofibular. So you really have to have a high-grade ankle tear injury to, uh, to disrupt this posterior talofibular ligament. So it's kind of one of these things you can almost ignore much of the time. Um, and I'll show that again when we look at the fluid-sensitive sequences because it's easier to see to some extent then. Now, let me just finish by showing that that posterior talofibular on the coronal images here. So coming back, here's talus, here's the calcaneus here. And so here's the fibula here. Remember, for at the level of the tibiofibular joint here, uh, kind of ankle joint, that's posterior tibiofibular. Down here, though, lower, that structure right there, that's talofibular. Okay, so you got to be really careful that the anatomy is kind of close together. Let's look at the trickiest one. So that's the calcaneofibular ligament. So you're expecting it to go from fibula down to the calcaneus. And in the meantime, we'll look at these. These are the perineal tendons here. Um, it wouldn't make sense for um, us to be constructed such that a ligament connecting bone to bone kind of went outside tendons, right? It would probably be a bad idea for the tendons. So the CFL is this little gray structure right in here going just deep to the perineal tendons. And I always say that if it's easy to see, it's probably abnormal. And so it's just this little, here's the calcaneus, it's this little tiny thin dark structure right here that I have to again scroll to, to track going right deep to the tendon there. And then it comes up and it inserts on the fibula like right there. So can you see that? It kind of goes just a little thin band there, very easy just to walk by. But if it's scarred and thickened, then it's easier to see. And that's typically a, you know, a reflection of a prior sprain. Now, the CFL is actually pretty well seen on coronal images. And um, again, you have to be very careful where you're looking. So if we're just below the fibula here, here's the perineal tendons. And you can't quite see it on this plane, but as I scroll back and forth, see this structure coming off the fibula right there? And then you come backwards, hard to see because it's deep to tense, and right there, See that little dinky thing? That's the calcaneofibular ligament. And I think the most important thing about that is that <clears throat> if you are debating something about the anterior talofibular ligament, whether it's been sprained or not, um, then since we know that sprains tend to occur from anterior to posterior, if you have thickening of the calcaneofibular ligament, it's very uncommon to actually tear that in isolation. So that kind of implies that there's probably an abnormality of the anterior talofibular ligament as well, if that makes any sense. So those are the that's a quick tour of the lateral ligaments. If you go medially here, so we're going to find the medial malleolus of the tibia, and then just below that is going to be deltoid ligament. And you just kind of get off the medial malleolus, and then you have the deltoid ligament coming in here. And if I go to the coronals, it's typically better seen on the coronals. Okay, so here's medial malleolus, deltoid ligament fibers. In normal, it's a nice kind of fan-shaped structure here going from tibia to talus. A number of fibers here can have a little bit of signal in it on fluid-sensitive sequences. And um, there's a tibio-talar part here, this kind of deep part. And then there's also more superficial parts, like this is probably part of the superficial part of the deltoid ligament. And we don't necessarily always separate out those components when we diagnose things, but it's important to know that there's those two different components. All right, so those are some ligaments. So we're going, we went bones, ligaments. Let's now take a look at the tendons. We'll take a quick tour of the tendons, because that's when, you, when you're looking at scans, that's kind of one of the most important <clears throat> things to look at, because that's a common site of pain and symptoms. So in the back, Achilles tendon, and I'm just showing the coronals here, so we don't also so we see the Achilles great, but here's the Achilles coming back to the calcaneus. So soleus and gastroc making up the Achilles tendon. And Kate has slides that show that the normal Achilles should be um, <clears throat> should be happy. It should have like a, 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 a concave undersurface and or flat. And so it's a little smile right there. That's the normal Achilles tendon with low signal throughout it. 
This little dot right there, kind of a fine point, but that's actually the plantaris tendon that comes down all the way from the upper calf, parallel in the Achilles down to the calcaneus. And sometimes when, when you have Achilles tears, that plantaris is still intact. So that can be something that almost looks like it's a partial Achilles tear. So let's just go back up then. I'm gonna to go to like the level of the joint here. <clears throat> and one approach to tendons is just to kind of go, you know, all the way around circumferentially here um, or circumnavigating things. Um, but let's just start here laterally. We kind of took care of the Achilles tendon. <clears throat> so laterally, what tendons are we looking at here? So, per perineal tendons, right? And you have two of them, longus and a brevis. And here you can see that the brevis is the deeper muscle belly with its tendinous component. The longus is this one that's lateral here. So as we go down, the brevis muscle belly tapers off and they're mashed together. The brevis is deeper, longus is, is more superficial. And then going below the ankle here, then you often get a little bit of intermediate signal in those tendons, but this is the brevis heading out towards the base of the fifth here, this little thin structure here. And then here's the perineus longus coming over, and it's gonna actually sweep all the way underneath the foot. It doesn't, you can't show it real well. Here's part of the longus going all the way underneath the foot. And you can follow those things in coronals as well. So perineus longus and brevis, and we expect the longus to actually cruise all the way under the cuboid here all the way over to the to the uh, <clears throat> kind of medial aspect of the midfoot forefoot junction. So normal tendon should have low signal intensity on all sequences, um, and it, you know we're not showing the fluid sensitive yet to show the <clears throat> the different uh, intensities, but they should be black. One way to remember these lateral tendons: brevis bone. Brevis is closer to the bone. Longus is more lateral. Okay, so that can help you remember which is which. The medial tendons. Um, Tom, Dick, and Harry over here. So let me just zoom in on that for a second. Um, <clears throat> the biggest one is the posterior tibial tendon. And so if we go above the level of the ankle, here's posterior tibial flexor digitorum longus. And this big muscle belly here, that's the flexor hallucis longus with its tendon here. So Tom, Dick, and Harry. Some, some of us remember Tom, Dick, and a nervous Harry, like because the neurovascular bundle's in here. But you just scroll down See the posterior tibial tendon right uh, closely opposed to the tibial malleolus here, cruising down and can get a little bit flattened out. The, the PT tendon tends to be more ovoid and it definitely should be bigger, about twice as big as these other two tendons. That's normal. So let me zoom down a little bit. A lot of times the PT tendon, as it comes down, it gets a little bit of intermediate signal near the navicular and it has insertions that are going numerous different places. So I won't go into the details on that, but just keep in mind that it can be normal for the PT tendon to look a little funny as it's going down to insert on the navicular and some of the cuneiforms and so on. PT, FDL, also another one that doesn't get imaged or, excuse me, injured very much, can sort of almost ignore it and get tenus uh, but that's that one's just next to the PT here. And then the FHL, that's kind of midline behind the ankle muscle belly here coming down, and then you're just in tendon. And that's a tendon and tendon sheath that gets uh, inflammation quite often. It's uncommon for that tendon to tear, but it goes very closely opposed to the bone here and to the tarsal tunnel. So people that have FHL problems can have irritation of the tibial nerve and stuff back in here. So Tom, Dick, and Harry. Um, the neurovascular bundle, um, usually you can see a an artery and two veins. And so here's tendon, tendon. See this structure, this one, these three things, vein, artery, vein, there might be a separate vein here. The other thing that's sitting in here is the nerves. So the darker structures, that's tibial nerve coming down. And typically you can come down and see that branching into the medial and lateral um, plantar nerves. So that's another kind of checkpoint to look for. Anterior tendons, and then we're almost done with our search here, except for some of the mis miscellaneous stuff. Um, <clears throat> Tom, Harry, and Dick, right? So tibialis anterior, extensor hallucis, and extensor digitorum with the anterior um, <clears throat> tibial artery coming down to the dorsalis pedis here. Not very commonly injured. We kind of, I wouldn't say you can ignore those, but 
the odds of having pathology there is fairly low. Okay, so if we take care of the tendons and ligaments, then it's like, oh, what else is there? We kind of cover, have to cover bone things when we have fluid sensitive sequences as well. Um, <clears throat> but then there's some other things to, to think about when you look at ankles. Um, <clears throat> So soft tissue problems in general, I mentioned the, the neurovascular bundle here. Um, other areas to look at include the uh, kind of our checklist includes things like the spring ligament complex, which is a little bit too complicated to go into here, but that's kind of between um, calcaneus and uh, navicular and talus, and it supports the midfoot. Some of this is spring ligament complex in here. These are other spring ligament components. Um, you want to look at the plantar fascia, and the axial images are not great for that, but the coronal images, if you look in here at the plantar surface of the calcaneus, you have these thickenings of the, of the fascia here that are the plantar fascia. <clears throat> and you have different terminology for it. Um, some people will call this the medial bundle and the lateral bundle. Um, some, some folks feel like this more medial um, muscle structure here going to the great toe is actually part of the fascial complex. So tend to call this like the intermediate bundle and the lateral bundle, but <clears throat> plantar fascia should be dark in signal, it's very closely opposed to the, the adjacent muscle because it's kind of an aponeurosis. And it's usually this intermediate bundle that gets into trouble, lateral bundle here. And that shows up nicely on sagittals, of course. So if you go back to the sagittals here, so here's, Achilles coming in, calcaneus, and then plantar fascia coming off here, okay. So finally, we'll look at things like the sinus tarsi, and if you look here between the talus and the calcaneus, there's this fat containing area, and there's some little ligaments to go between those uh, bones, the intertarsal ligaments. And normally, if you look, uh, try to find it here on the coronals, it opens up laterally here. The normal individual should have fat in there. If you have low signal in there or edema in there, it can be a sign of inflammation and sometimes scarring, sometimes causing so-called sinus tarsi syndrome. Um, I think I covered most of what I wanted to cover. I think I, I realized I didn't mention the subtalar joints very much, so let me just talk about that for a second. Um, the 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 talar dome, tibio talar joint is you know fairly understandable joint. The subtalar joints get kind of confusing, right? You need to know about these because they're important for things like calcaneal fractures and other, other derangements that occur. I think the most important thing is to remember they have a posterior, uh, posterior subtalar joint, right? So that's the big one between the main body of the talus and the calcaneus. And that usually has cartilage that you can actually see the see the actual cartilage layers, like you can even maybe see it on this T1-weighted image, see the little thin line between cartilage layers there. That definitely gets arthritis in it, and so you can have um, uh, pain related to that. So that's the posterior subtalar joint. <clears throat> the mid-subtalar joint, you have to go medially, and you see, and so this is more medial tibia. This is a different joint, right? And so that's actually the mid-subtalar joint there, and then where's the anterior? Well, the anterior is usually smaller and it can be in continuity with the mid subtalar joint. You kind of have to scroll around and find another little facet here under the talar head to find that anterior subtalar joint. So don't sweat about that so much. Just remember, you should be able to find the mid subtalar joint and the posterior subtalar joint. And if you look at coronal images, the posterior subtalar joint is, we're very oblique to it. So let's see if I get this to, I don't really want to cross-reference for me at the moment, but this is the posterior subtalar joint. And then more anteriorly and, and medially, this is the mid-subtalar joint here. Okay, we're oblique to it. Um, an another facet of this that's important is when you look at ankles, people can end up having bony coalitions, like developmental fusions between the bones, either bony or fibrous type things. And that's another thing to have in your search pattern. So one of the last things I often do is look for look for other bones, things like or connections between bones, especially things like calcaneo connecting to navicular, um, 
You can have subtalar coalitions where the mid subtalar joint <clears throat> is bridged here. So let's see, I think that's pretty much what I wanted to cover in terms of the anatomy here. So let me go back to the slides for a second. Um, so systematic search, right? You want to be systematic and um, going through the anatomy. Just to review quickly, things that things that look um, things that are good to look at on different planes, or how I might approach things: sagittal images, bones and marrow, looking at fluid, looking at talar dome cartilage, those joints, the Achilles is well seen in sagittal, sinus tarsi, plantar fascia. The coronal images. Um, doesn't really matter what sequences you do. We can either do T1 and some fluid sensitive sequence or protein density. Again, bones and marrow, the joints, talar dome, cartilage is nicely seen. You can see the deltoid well. You can see the tendons as they go underneath the midfoot, plantar fascia, and then I use that to troubleshoot the ligaments. The axials are probably the most important plane because you see all these structures uh, in cross section syndesmotic ligaments, lateral ankle ligaments, deltoid and spring, and then all the tendons. And so if you only could do one plane in the ankle, uh, you'd kind of lose out on talar dome, but you'd probably have, you'd probably choose to do axial imaging because the, that's where the money is as far as all these little structures go. But the reality is you really need, you really need both. Um, <clears throat> So that's a quick tour of ankle anatomy, and I'm going to stop the recording at this point, and we'll look at some, some cases interactively. So thanks for your attention, and um, appreciate your comments as always.